Welcome to everyone. We're a little late today. We're so we hope sorry. You can still find us. It's yes. our fault. <laughs> yes. We're so grateful to be with Patty Rokas, our dear, dear, wonderful friend. And our famous wonderful friend. Yes, and just our giving. She, she is so Christ-like. She has devoted her life to helping others in ways that you can't even imagine. But we'll <laughs> talk about some of those today. Patty, thanks for being with us. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here with you. And I apologize to everybody. We were trying so hard to get all these yeah. videos to show everybody with the rock art moving, and they just weren't cooperating. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> More cash. <laughs> um, so as you get on, we would love to see where, where you are viewing from. So just put that in the comments and please. And, then, yeah. and another yeah. thing in the comments is I would love to know what your favorite Bible stories are, especially the Old Testament Bible stories, because that's what we're talking about today. And what, knowing what your favorites are could influence what is going to end up in this newest book that I'm just finishing now. That is so great. And you can find her on Facebook, too, and make comments there because she's always asking for input, which I love. So oh. input and in what? We are going to talk about the books that Patty's written, her journey to get to be called the rock lady. <laughs> <laughs> and on. just um, a little bit. We're not going to say too much because we want her to tell that story. And um, we yeah, she, yeah, we'll just turn it over to you, Patty. I don't even know what to say because I would love to hear from you. <laughs> There's so much that we could talk about, but we did a um, one of these together last year where we talked about last Easter when we were talking about He is Risen. So I play with rocks and pebbles that I find when I go hiking, um, just natural rocks that are out there. I never change the rocks and then I make pictures with the rocks that tell Bible stories. But what we're talking about today is that I'm working on the next book, the third book. So we've done Christmas, we've done the atonement or Easter. And now because of Come Follow Me, I thought last year, I was thinking, oh my gosh, the best stories in the world, the epic Bible stories, you know, Jonah in the well, Moses in the Red Sea, Esther, Naomi, these fantastic Bible stories. Well, could I tell them with rocks and pebbles? And, um, I was actually last year when I was thinking about doing this, I was also thinking about quitting this whole thing because, you know, you can't really make any money and you, you can't, you have to do this full time if you're going to do books and all that. And I was just like, I can't keep doing this. And then I'm serious. The same week that I'm seriously considering, okay, we're done. The church called and said, Patty, we have a brand new channel for children on That's YouTube. Great. Yeah, Gospel for Kids. And they said, we want more art projects. And because the friend to friend that broadcast that we did in 2021, and I showed them how to do rock art, that was one of the most popular things they'd ever done. And they said, let's just do more. Let's do 20 episodes on Come Follow Me of the epic Bible stories on the kids YouTube channel. And I'm like, oh, that'll be so fun. That'll be so great. And they said, yeah, and we need it in two months. <laughs> I have to do all the rock art and the one piece of rock art takes me at least a week and you want me to do 20 plus all the episodes it wasn't possible and I almost said no but um I just said heavenly father you can do anything that's what these bible stories show us you can do anything you could do this but do I have the faith to receive that inspiration so I said yes and I could tell you a long story about the miracles that happened but it happened and we did 20, oh God, 20 episodes in it's amazing. Lessons. Blew my mind. But then I thought, oh my gosh, I did 20. Shouldn't I just do all the come follow me lessons? And then I realized that was way too hard. <laughs> and I tried. You might have seen me do Moses. And then I tried the creation and it was hard. So I have been working just on creating a new, it's an ebook because it takes so much time to print a book and you'd never have it in time till next year. So like in the next few weeks, I'll have this finished. And I wanted to just show you today some of the rock art pieces. And we wanted to show the videos of the rocks animated, but yeah. we're really struggling with that. But could we try to show the David and Goliath video? No. Absolutely. Yeah. And before we start, I just want to say that our grandchildren love to do rocks. Many of them <laughs> have just produced these gorgeous pictures because of your tutorials and your motivation. And it's just amazing because you do understand so well the power of the kinesthetic activities that kids can do, that anybody can do while they're learning, while they're learning any, any topic. Mm -hmm. And when you've got that hands-on, that's when it gets in their hearts and in their minds and their memories. 
and makes a difference in their lives. So thank you from us, particularly. Our kids were so excited. Um, Isaac, in fact, sent you his picture of the crucifixion <laughs> that he had made with rock art. I love it so much. Anytime I get a picture of what the children are making, it touches me so much because you know that if they know the story well enough, if they could go get rocks, just basic rocks and pebbles that they're finding hiking. And they, and the trick is get a long rock, collect all the long, tall rocks you can find, collect all the circle rocks you can find, because mm -hmm. you can make most of the stories with circles and long rocks. So I just tell the kids that they're out looking for these rocks. They're thinking about how would the story look? Now we're starting to get the stories into their hearts as they're yeah. learning, making the art. So that's what it's really all about. It's not. It a is. And I just think the story of how you came to be the rock lady, how this, you know, it's just something that you felt inclined to do, led to do, inspired to do. Do you just no, want to tell me that first sense. and then we'll go to your story? Well, um, we would take too much time if I told the story, but I do have to say yeah. I never intended to do this. This was never a deliberate thing. It was, I had... I needed answers for my own life. I had been recently divorced. I was tired of my career. I lost my home. I didn't know what was next in my life. And I went to the woods for a two week camping trip all by myself to pray and ask for direction. What do I do next? And I got no answers to those prayers or so I thought. And instead I came home with a bucket full of rocks. <laughs> And I didn't know that bucket full of rocks was an answer to my prayers and it's turned into all of this. And so it's just an example of how the Lord will work with us. But sometimes it's so difficult to hear those answers and to decipher what he's saying. But if we will put one step in front of the other and just keep moving forward, things we could never have imagined will happen. But that's the act of faith, right? That even though everything looks like a disaster right now, how can I ever get out of this? To keep moving forward is an act of faith. And sometimes that's all the Lord needs to work with us. And that's all he needed with me. And even though I actually had my first book, the Christmas one is is kind of, I'm, I'm not thrilled with it because I got better with the art over time. And so now I look at this I and go. I love that book. I'm I kind of embarrassing. Everybody we think of that would love it. But what's good about it is that this is that one bucket of rocks that I'm talking about. I spilled it out, pushed them around. These pictures emerged with those, with those. And it's not about the books. It's about that the that God wants to talk to us and is talking to us all the time. He's giving us answers, but we just have to keep moving forward and trust the answers are going to come. Resolution's going to happen. It's the idea of hope, faith, mm -hmm. charity. Those three things. If we can have faith that God is real and loves us, if we can have hope that the future is going to be better, that things are going to resolve, answers are going to come. If we can have charity, the pure love of Christ and love everybody around us, even though life might be a disaster, choose to love anyway, that brings the power that allows heaven to open and pour out blessings and make life work for us. And that's what I'm trying to say in the Bible stories rock. The subtitle is how to walk with God and be powerful mm, I want I love it. to take these stories and go, oh, my gosh, I can walk with God, too. I can be powerful. Well, let's see how these guys did it. And that's what we talk about and we show in here and then they realize they can too. That's the point, right? Of aligning with Heavenly Father, of trusting in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Then the power comes through us and we can be like these stories and we can tell our own stories. And that's how this book is very different is that instead of just telling the story, which is great, now we're talking about the application and make these kids powerful, empower them. Mm. Well, we're going to try so to great. show that video right That's now. Right. Let's That's let's right. give it a try. We're hoping this works. Yes, we are. <laughs> this is my funnest video because you get it as you keep going. I'll talk, but let it play okay. soon. Um, as I made David and Goliath, and this is a huge actual piece of rock art because David's, I mean, Goliath's huge, right? And then David's a little guy. Um, it was pretty exciting to see these rocks kind of come together. And I went Thank <laughs> you. 
that's good to put up there. And anybody could watch this video um, on my uh, on my YouTube channel. It's just Patty Rokus, P A T T I R O K U S. So just go to YouTube, go to my channel, and you can watch. Oh, they're it. so wonderful! You are amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, I'm doing all that just with my uh, cell phone. Uh, like oh, crazy. Special equipment here. This just looks down at my stuff and I move stuff around. It's amazing. And what I love is that you are so free with all the things that you have learned about how to do that. Not only make the rock art, but how to video it. And you can just look at her site, pattyrocus.org. Or rockstellstories.com. Rocks okay. Say that one more time. Rocks tell stories. Got it. Perfect. And it's amazing. You can you can spend a lot of time just learning from Patty with that. So Patty, let's see what you've got here. Okay, we'll yeah. Advance the slides a couple because let's show them some of the rock art. And you know why does who cares? Why does it matter? So one more. We were trying to put these in there. <laughs> um, so this first one, in okay, this is a total miracle from Heavenly Father. I was saying, okay, we're gonna do these epic stories, but how do we frame this up? How do we say, why are we telling these stories? And then which ones do I show? And that's when I realized that the very first three stories of the Old Testament are the creation, then Adam and Eve, and then the fall, set up the whole gospel of Jesus Christ for us. So in the creation, we learn, what do we learn there? We learn who God is right? That he's all powerful, that he's made everything. There's nothing or anyone more powerful than him. And so when we start understanding, okay, this is the God we worship. This is the only true and living God. That's the foundation of everything. Then the next story, next slide. The next story is about Adam and Eve. And what do we learn there? We learn about who we are, that we are made in the image of God and that we are his children and that he loves us. He so that's so critical to know who God is and know who we are. Like we learn in the lectures on faith teaches us. That's how you're going to have faith. You got to know those two things. And then the next one, next slide, is about our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the fall. Why do we need a Savior? Well, we're going to make mistakes, and we'd never make it back home without a Savior. So the very first three stories of the Bible, the creation, Adam and Eve, and the fall, set up the whole gospel of Jesus Christ for us. And I had never seen it like that before. Um, so that's, we tell those, and then we start moving into these epic stories. So basically the scripture stories teach us how to rock mortality, you know, how to do <laughs> how do you make it through mortality? And I don't think I'd seen it like that before. I, I just thought those are cool stories that help me have faith or whatever, but now I see that's the foundation. Right. So, um, Yeah. So the next slide um, that talks about faith, hope, and charity, you know, Paul talked about mm -hmm. faith, hope, and charity being so critical. And that's when I realized, okay, so you learn these truths about who God is, who I am, but how do you pull the power down into your life? And I realized it's by having faith, hope, and charity, like we just mentioned. If you can really have faith that God is all powerful and hope that things are going to get better and the pure love of Christ for everyone then no matter what's going around in your world, if you can hang on to these things, it, your world will get better, that you will have inner power, that God will be with you and you can walk with God and be powerful. Mm, love that. So let's try it. So here's Esther. We were going to show you this video, but we couldn't get it to work. <laughs> so you'll have to go to my YouTube channel. But um, Esther, you know, one of my favorite stories here is, Scott, can I put you or Andrew on on the line here and say, you know, what is it about this story of Esther that teaches us about how to be powerful in our own lives? Such an amazing example, right? Here she was just a covenant person trying to do what's right. She gets pulled into the limelight and then has to in and of herself, make a decision that says, I am going to save my people, even if it means sacrificing my life. And her courage to be able to pray and have her friends fast and pray and then move forward in faith because her great desire to save others. I mean, it really is the basic story of all of our lives that we came to this earth saying we're willing to go to earth, go to mortality. And our big goal is to be able to do everything we can 
to save our brothers and sisters and get them back home. So it's a perfect example. Wow, beautifully said. Wow, and you weren't even you didn't even prepare for that. So speaking to all of the pe- the audience out there, you probably have children or grandchildren. I don't, so maybe some of you don't. But most of you have children or grandchildren, or you're teaching a primary class, or there's neighborhood kids. We all have children in our life in some way or another. Now, if you can tell a Bible story, you're gonna the kids are gonna be riveted. But if you can then say, now, okay, that was a cool story. But like Scott just did, why does that matter to me? Like, how does that help my life? Well, as a parent and you're teaching kids, that might feel overwhelming. Like, gosh, I hardly know the stories. How am I supposed to apply it to them? But here's the trick. If you can just think about faith, hope, and charity, and how did that play in here? Just like Scott was saying, you know, how did she show faith? You know, you can, you can come up with that. How did she show hope? How did she show pure love of Christ for all of her people? And even the king and the people she was with, it's all in there. And then when you say to the child, now, how can you, what, what are you struggling with right now? Oh, I don't like school so much. Well, how can you have faith like Esther did? Or how could you have hope or charity? When you boil it down to just faith, hope, or charity, as, a, as an adult, it's so much easier to talk about a Bible story and put it in that context than have to know all the details about everything and try to be wise and say something smart. <laughs> Makes it really fast and easy to be able to say something meaningful. Let's yeah. try another one. Uh, that was supposed to be a video. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And this, this is supposed to be Joseph of Egypt. And you know how he got sold by his brothers as a slave. And then later it becomes much better. You know, it becomes second in command to Pharaoh. So we, we've all studied this story recently and come follow me. Well, once again, we could talk about faith. How did he have faith? How did he have hope? Yeah, how, did, how did he have charity? Um, you starting to get the idea. Do Scott or Angel, is there anything you would say to a child about how this story applies to them? Oh, so many times, right? Joseph was just in the depths of despair or could have been. I mean, sold as a slave, thrown in prison, on and on and on. Falsely accused, everything else. But he just kept moving forward in such a positive way. Faith was his constant watchword. And and to have hope in prison when you interpret the dreams and they leave and forget you <laughs> and it goes on for a couple more years and to still hope there's any chance of deliverance there. But then to, when his brothers came and with him and after all they had done just to come down and show how much he loved them and it's really forgave them. A, it's yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is it's, it's such a story about forgiveness. And how many times do we look to that story in our own lives when when we've been wronged or hurt? or left alone mm. and say, look at Joseph and can we be like that? Yeah, beautiful. And we can do this with each of the stories. So I just put a couple of those up. If, But let's move on to the next slide the, and go one back. There you go. The bottom line is even for a child, we are all looking for deliverance. It, it might be financial, you know, there, there's just so many that's mortality. There's struggles and problems and we're looking for deliverance. And all of these stories in the Bible are stories of deliverance and teach us how, you know what, we don't need to be in despair about our challenges, that there is the impossible can be possible through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is, this is why we're, lear- we're going to church. This is why we are part of the gospel of Jesus Christ is because we are progressing and growing even though even though, even though life is hard and it doesn't make sense, we keep progressing. And through the gospel of Jesus Christ and our faith in our Savior, we can do that. And these stories teach us how. So if we can make the bridge between the stories in the Bible for our children to their lives, then going to church and doing all the things that we're asked to do, it starts having some relevance and starts making some sense. Yeah. And it's not just, okay, God wants me to love him. I better do this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm powerful with God. I can walk with God and be powerful. And that's my hope for all that I'm doing is that we can bring great faith to families and to children through the scriptures. Hmm. Love As that. They experience these beautiful opportunities themselves to present the stories or to create the stories out of rocks or to go through the tutorials you've given It gives them the opportunity to internalize it even more, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So there's a couple more points. 
Um, like, where do you see this rock art? We just talked about my YouTube channel has 150 videos. You can see all that and then inspire the kids to do stuff. Or you can go to my website, Rocks Tell Stories. But go ahead, one more slide. As we were mentioning earlier, this is what the YouTube channel looks like for kids. Now, you'll see there, there's only 35,000 subscribers. That's not very much when we've got millions of kids. Worldwide. And there are all kinds of neat, it's not just my stuff, of course. I'm just a little teeny thing, but it teaches them how to draw. And then there's all kinds of animated videos on the Bible stories, et cetera. But every other week they're posting a rock art video to go with the come follow. Yay! <laughs> and they've only posted two. Um, so one will come next week. This one was on the empty tomb. And we did one with the plagues where the kids used learn to make frogs and bugs from the plagues with rocks. Super fun. <laughs> so, just so you know, I can go there to watch mm -hmm. these every other week. Okay, next slide. And then I think this is kind of fun that I get emails from churches all over the world all the time. And they are showing these rock art videos throughout the world um, to their congregations. So there is something about the rocks telling the stories of Jesus, testifying of Jesus that is really resonating everywhere. And I just thought that was kind of cool. Oh, it's so cool. Amazing. It is amazing. It's wonderful. You know, and I just need to tell you from a parent's and grandparent's viewpoint, what we talked about, the hands-on, um, Scott and I do, uh, um, we volunteer for a site called the Family History Guide. And part of what we do is we create um, family history activities for each week of Come Follow Me. And you can find that on the Family History Guide page, the site, which is totally free. And then you just go there. Um, it's on the home page. Click on weekly family history activities. And I just want to tell you that this, what you have done, is exactly what we're trying to do with family history. So when you make rock art about any Bible story, our tie-in is make rock art about your family history stories, about what's going on in your life. And then you've got that hands-on, like we were talking about, and to get it inside and, and to love those stories and be inspired by your own family history. So, so thank you. Yeah, what is the website for the Family History Guide? It's just the family history guide. Just put that in your browser and it will come up. And then on the home page under faith, faiths is weekly family history activities, or you can just scroll down and click. And then there's a, um, a schedule and we have done this. This is our fourth year and they're all there. And so even if it's not on the topic, you can go find family history activities for all of the Come Follow Me lessons. So it's pretty that. awesome. And we love what you're doing because that's what we're trying to do. And we can use what you've done in what we do. That's right. So thank you. And she's <laughs> quoting you. Thank you. I love that. But um, I hope everybody will go to thefamilyhistoryguide.com because we all need it's the family history guide. guide. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah, it's great. And thank you for letting us talk about that because seriously, what you do is what we try to do is just get that into the hearts, the stories from the past, the Bible stories, the church history stories, family history stories, because that what is that is what can help them in these trying days, right? To yeah. feel connected. Exactly. Yeah, that there's nothing more important we can do than to have the kids feel connected to God and to each other, to our families. Amen. Strengthen them. Yeah. Well, we can stop here, but I, I just threw up pictures from the book if you wanted to see what the art looks like. Look at that. That's amazing. You are just such an artist, Patty. What, no. you, what you've made with rocks is just incredible. And they speak to you. I think what you talked yeah. about before about even the rocks testifying of Christ. Yeah, they do. They, they do. I go walking and I will see a rock and I'm like, I didn't bring a baggie today. I'm not collecting rocks today. And I come home with pockets full of rocks because I can't help it. They're just like, I want to testify of Jesus. Pick me, pick me. And yeah. Oh, <laughs> look great. at that. Oh, I just love, love them all. Yeah. And, and again, thank you for being so free with all of your ideas and your instructions and your beautiful photos. You can get cards, you can get the books, you can see all these videos that will inspire. And honestly, to use them in home church is just such a blessing. 
So that's one reason, one reason we were so excited to have Patty on today yeah. is to let you know what is available that she has created. And the other great reason is to hear Patty's beautiful discipleship flow through her wonderful soul mm -hmm. as she exemplifies what it means to really consecrate your life. Oh, Thanks, Patty, so you. much for all you are and all you do. Is there anything you would like to leave us with before we close? Um, just that it's, it's not hard to teach the gospel to children, and sometimes we make it too hard. If we get the family history guide content and get those activities, or we get rocks and pebbles and we start telling stories as we let the children embrace um, just the natural resources out there or art and play with these stories, they will get in their hearts and they will be more powerful and they won't feel like life is too hard and they can't do it, which we're seeing happen so much to our children, this depression and anxiety. We can empower them through our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of these epic stories that he's given us to tell them and then let them tell their own stories. So um, I just know that this is a blessing and I'm grateful for this humble, humble little gift that God's given me to share the rocks and pebbles with the world and especially the children. Thank you. Thanks, Patty, thank so you much. so much for letting me be please, here. <laughs> oh, thank you. And please share this to our viewers.